If you wanted to try digital bullet journaling but didn't want to spend an arm and a leg to do it, then today's video is for you. If you're super new to Notion, then I do have a Notion basics video that might be useful. That one's linked in the description box below. And the bullet journal template that we're looking at today is also available for purchase on my shop. So if you didn't want to set your own one up and just wanted one that you could jump in and use straight away, that's the one we're looking at today. So be sure to check it out. Without further ado though, let's jump into Notion and have a look. So here we have the bullet journal Notion template that I've made. As you can see, it's kind of blue or ocean inspired. So we've got an ocean picture at the top and one in the middle here. All of these are completely changeable. You do not have to keep it as an ocean theme. So for instance, the one at the top, we can just press on change cover and change it to whatever you like. You can look through Unsplash and find something that speaks to you. And with the one at the bottom here, similar idea, we just press on the three dots and we can change that one as well by pressing on replace. I just wanted my front page to look a little bit pretty. Having a look through each of these sections that I set up though, so we have the currently section. So we've got this month and this week, and you can effectively link to anything else that you want in your Notion. So for instance, if I wanted to link it to a specific place, I can just type in the at symbol. And if I wanted to link it to say my October, 2022 setup, I can just write in October, 2022 right here, press on that. And now that link is there for me. So I'd put that in at the start of each month so that I can quite easily reference my monthly setup. But I'll just delete that for now because this is the template. Similarly, we have the this week section. So that one just links out to whichever weekly you're currently working on. Again, just by typing in the at symbol and then typing in the title of the week in question. Having a look through our collections though, because this is kind of where the special stuff is. So we have the future log, jumping into that one. This one's just set up as a calendar. You can see we have an untitled event here. You can just move that to maybe today, which it's currently the 14th for me, but move it to whenever you want. If you want to add in a new event, you just hover over the day in question, press on the plus button and type in what's happening. So maybe this is dad's birthday. I say maybe, that's my dad's birthday. Happy birthday for the 21st dad. But again, this is the template, so goodbye dad's birthday. It defaults to whatever view you've recently had though. So because it's currently October and I made this in October, that's when it's viewing at the moment. But if I say left it on December, then next time I come back into this, so if we go out and go back in, it'll show December for me. The next section we have is a goal section. And this is something that I particularly like putting in my bullet journal because I very much use my bullet journal for productivity, goal setting, goal achieving, hopefully. You can see we have three template goals here. And again, I've just continued the ocean theme by putting an ocean picture with each of them. So if we jump into goal one, these are set up as a goal setting template. So each of these has a space to outline what your goal is, what do you want to achieve? And it's got a little turnout menu here to kind of elaborate on that question. And we've got a purpose section. So why do you want to achieve the goal? What's your ideal outcome? A space to brainstorm possible metrics for success or actions that you can take for your goal and some other sections here. Again, each of these little turnout menus offers some more information about each of those sections to help you do your goal setting in a way that is actually going to get you to achieve your goals. If three goals isn't enough though, we of course have that set up as a template. It's not just in each of these pages. So you can go and hover over the new button here, press on that little drop down menu, and we've got a goal template there that you can just add in a new goal every time you want to set a new one. And it pre-populates it with each of those sections, which I think is pretty nifty. At the top, we also have a progress section. So you can say whether it's just an idea, are you in the planning stage? Have you started the goal or have you finished the goal? Jumping back to our bullet journal dashboard though, the next collection we have is a media list. So jumping into that one, you can see we have different types of media all grouped by their type. So a space for books, a space for movies, TV shows, and podcasts. You can see we do have one example here, which I just chucked in Jaws, which I watched ages ago. I was trying to think of something that was kind of neutral that people might have seen. I don't know. But you can see we have a place to write down what the title is, who it was by. So in terms of movies, that'd be like a director. In terms of books, that'd be an author, etc. A space for a rating. So you can press on this one and press on how many stars you gave that piece of media, which is kind of cute. 
And then we've got a status space. So have you watched it? Like, is it completed? Are you in progress in terms of your watching, listening or viewing? And then is it just something that you want to watch or want to listen to? That kind of stuff. Once you have watched it, you also have a space to put down the date that you completed it, which is kind of cool. And what I also have in here, which I thought was pretty nifty, is a covers space. So instead of looking at it as kind of a list view, you can look at it in terms of the covers of that media. So you can see I put in the cover for Jaws here. If we press on this one, that one's just the cover photo of that entry. So if I change the cover to, I don't know, we'll just put it pink so you can kind of see what I mean. It changes it over here on our media list but I don't want it to be pink. I'd like it to be the Jaws cover. So I'm gonna go put the Jaws cover back. So just pasting in that image link and then that'll put it in here and I can reposition it on here so it shows the shark face. Excellent. Going back to our bullet journal dashboard though, the next one we have is a reset checklist. And like I said, all of these come as part of the template. So if you purchase the template, it has all of these already populated in the way that I'm showing you here. So on our reset checklist page, we first of all have a little toggle menu that tells you how you can use the page. So very much encourages you to change these to suit your needs because they are just examples. But we have a space for your daily reset tasks, your weekly reset tasks, and your monthly reset. For the daily reset, this one is fairly short because you are doing it every day. The weekly reset is a little longer and then the monthly reset is longer again. The nice part is each of these are checklist items. So as you do them, you can just tick them off. And then once you get to the end of the reset, you can just highlight all of them and then uncheck all of them at once. Nice and simple. Now it's fresh and clean, ready to be used again. The next thing we have is the master to-do list. And this one is set up as a table. So you can see we have a space to check off when the task is done. Once you check it off, it'll move itself to the completed task list, which is nice. We'll just put task one back. And we also have a place to outline what the task is. So actually writing down what it is you wanna get done. A space to assign its priority as high, medium, or low. A space to schedule that task so that you can actually say, oh look, I wanna do all of these things on Tuesday the 31st or whenever. There's also a space to designate it to a life area. And we do have some pre-populated life areas you can use but you can also press the three dots to the side of those and change the color or change what the label is and you can add new ones just by typing them in. I've also put in a space for a created time here because I personally like to know when I made these tasks, but if you don't want that one, you can just press on the title and press on delete property and it gets rid of it. Similarly, you can also add in extra columns just by pressing on the plus and adding in different things that you might want to include. There's a huge variety in terms of the things that you can put in here and you can find some really good Notion tutorials online. Jumping back to our main page though, that is the collection space. If you want to add in a new collection, you just can type in what you want your collection name to be. So let's say that I want a collection for my cleaning checklist. The so cleaning checklist and then pressing on the six dots to the side of this, I can turn that into a page and then put my checklist items in there. I don't want that though, because cleaning is not something I enjoy. <laughs> on the right hand side here, we have a key. So a space to tell me what each of the different symbols means in the template. So a task is just a box. Once I've completed it, I can check it off just by pressing on it and it crosses it out for me. Any of the little triangle sections are a prompt or in particular a toggle prompt that you can toggle and untoggle just by clicking on that triangle. We have a dot for a note, or I'll sometimes use it for an event as well. And then we also have a template button, which is this little plus here. This template doesn't actually do anything though, just adds a smiley face in, just so that you know what the templates look like as you work through the overall bullet journal template. Those are kind of the things you'd find in your start of bullet journal, but getting into what's more of the kind of day to day stuff. And that is the monthly setup section. So in the bottom section here, we have the monthly setups, each of these labels here. So January through to December are just text. They don't actually have a month in them yet, but you can add a new monthly by pressing on the add new monthly setup here. So that one will just add in a new one and then you can customize it for the month that you're in. 
I do have a video showing how I use this template to set up the month of November. So if you wanted to see a monthly setup using this digital template, then be sure to check that one out. Or if you wanted to grab this bullet journal template for yourself, it is available for sale over on my shop, which is linked in the description box below. I'm excited to really get into this one and I hope you are too. As always team, thank you for watching and until next time, bye.